Hi there. Hey. How's it going? How are you? Good. How are you? Oh, I've had a headache since Friday. <laughs> oh no. Since Friday? Yeah. That's why I'm dressed like a lumberjack today. I'm just uh, trying to be comfy. Oh, that's, that's a long headache. I know. Is that I know. Like it's migraine been... kind of stuff? Yeah. It, it keeps like, like it was a migraine on Saturday and mm -hmm. then it got a little better and then it got really worse and it just keeps going mm -hmm. back and forth super annoying yeah it's difficult to focus and work and so hopefully yeah it goes away yeah. <laughs> it, hurt, it hurts when i lie down though so i'm working <laughs> otherwise i would have just taken today off yeah how you doing good good no lots of work but busy in a good way you know not too not crazy busy so no, no. Like that. huh but not overwhelmed. Yes. Good. Charles. Someone reminded me that today is Groundhog's Day. Oh, yeah. Oh, I have to go watch that movie tonight. That's a classic. <laughs> hey, Charles. How are you? I'm doing good, hey. hanging in there. How about you? About the same. <laughs> Having a look at the agenda. Yeah, so regarding the um, framework, uh, it's still with Scott, so I don't have any updates on that sense. So I don't know, hopefully he'll join. I know he was going to interview a few people, so once that is done, we'll have hopefully more and can start sharing stuff. I can't wait for <laughs> that to happen. Hey, Karen. Hello. Good to see ya. Yeah, I feel like I haven't seen you in forever. I've been hiding. <laughs> One day. Ralph gave me uh, a new project to work on and I've just been... Heads down. Oh yeah, trying to come up with a proof of concept for him for all his demos. I don't know what Ralph does except make demos. <laughs> This feels like quorum, doesn't it? We can start. I hate starting meeting late. It's just the worst for me. Um, so I don't know if anyone wanted to add anything else to the agenda here. Uh, otherwise I'm happy to just stroll on through and we can see how things are looking. Hey Josh. Let me add the meeting minutes to our chat. I just realized this is recorded, so everyone in the world got to hear about my migraine today. That's cool. Um, I really got to pay yeah. attention to that. So yeah. It does. How about we start with the content updates first, actually? And because I think we may talk about the, the KubeCon talk a little bit more than anything else. Um, so Catherine, you already got us up to date on the contributor framework, which is Scott is still interviewing people, right? So that's just kind of moving along, but we're not stuck. Um, how is the ladder looking? I think Josh, you were gonna submit some edits. Yeah, maybe? I've been, well, um, we wanted to make so many changes that we actually moved it over to HackMD. Okay. Um, hold on, I'm I'm linking that into the notes. Um, I've been actually going through that um, and sort of overhauling a bunch of stuff. Um, but anyone, wait, sorry, I've lost the tab where the notes are. No. The, um, <laughs> it's linked in chat. I, I have like 80 tabs open. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> 
So I'll just hearing about I'll add it. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Oh, got it. Okay. Um, so anybody else is more than welcome is is eagerly desired to to also bash away at it. Yeah. Um, the um, you know, because we're in a circumstance where lots of projects have contributor ladders, but they're all highly particular to those projects. Mm -hmm. um, as I've noticed from people trying to copy the Kubernetes one and me <laughs> saying, uh, well, that's completely inappropriate to your project because you don't have a steering committee, but okay. The, um, and, um, um, you know, Karen took this first stab at making a generic version and I'm trying to expand it to add extra options. Um, uh, because I identified seven potential levels in the contributor ladder mm -hmm. of which nobody will use all seven, but which, which like three or four out of the seven they use is going to vary by project. Yeah. I always want like a playing card game, like just giant oversized cards with pictures on them yeah. that are like, just pick what you want. I want oh my God. a contributor role, no, like, a reviewer. A, set, a Settlers of Catan type game where you have to buy your contributor level by assembling tokens. Oh my goodness. It's been years since I played that game. That would be really entertaining. Oh man. I do not have time to design another failed board game. <laughs> no, no one needs to do that. I was just, I just like the idea of going to the buffet of contributor ladder and putting brownies and mashed potatoes and salad on my plate. That's all. Right. And in order to make it all the way to approver, you have to have brownies, mashed potatoes, salad, soup, a yeah. mixed drink, right? You must have dessert. a salad on your plate. To right. Pass governance. <laughs> the, um, yeah. <laughs> I like this. Well, I don't like uh, salad, but I like this. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, you know, and, you know, sort of look through that, um, the, um, uh, you know, and, and add your your own stuff to it. One of the other things, so like, I like the bullet point thing that Karen did and I'm expanding on that format. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a little concerned that it might be too impersonal if you follow me. What do you mean? Like, there's not a lot of, of a voice to it of someone yeah. narrating how yeah. a ladder should be yeah. position or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I think I think it's perfectly fine. I mean, Karen, you can speak for it, but yeah. Um, well, I mean, I think as long as because the idea is like you know, like we would pro we provide like the description part at the beginning, right, and then like the bullet points. Even though there are a lot, it's also just like choose and pick what works for you, right? Um, I guess, I, like, I get that having a narrative feels more active and better, but also, like, is that the, um, like, you know, considering we're making a template, is that something we want mm -hmm. to take on knowing that a lot of it will change anyway? That's kind of my take. Yeah. I know that if I was taking a contributor ladder template, and using it for my own project, I would probably rewrite nearly every single word in it <laughs> and just and just take the ideas of, I needed this level, it should have these responsibilities. Uh, this is how you would accomplish it. But maybe it's just me, but I would immediately put my own voice on it to kind of fit the tone of the project. So I mean, I see what you're saying. It, yeah. it probably will get rewritten. By everyone I mean, should we even it. should we like actively encourage that too to like for people to add their own voice? I think there's absolutely nothing wrong with just using the template. I would assume it's. I just, I guess I like writing and sounding like a goof, so I would re, you know I would change it. <laughs> but this is why we're not basing any of it off of what I write because it's too. It's too informal. <laughs> Um, so I don't know, did we want to look at it or do we want to just say people should go look at it later, feel free to contribute. 
it's not done yet, so. Yeah. Um, there was one section that I kind of want to revisit just because I don't remember what we decided on last time, uh, but also like just to rehash some details. So, um, oh, cool. Okay. Uh, so don't look at the like table of contents thing in the yeah. above section because it's totally out of uh, yeah, order right this? now. Uh, oh yeah, that works. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. So one of the, um, there are a few things that Josh added in, right? Like organization member, we didn't necessarily have that mm -hmm. before. Um, but another section that we kind of um, veered a little bit away from what we were doing before is the sub project lead. And that was partly due to how Kubernetes is set up. Um, so I kind of want to just touch on this again, because um, I think originally the section that we had here was, um, Carolyn, you and I talked about this. It was like, I think it was just project lead, right? Like the person who's like kind of like the liaison um, with CNCF and like the like representative. So um, I think we may have maybe renamed this section, but um, I just wanna see if we want to still include that element or if this gets tucked under that or yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that doesn't seem like the description there doesn't seem like sub project lead to me. That seems yeah. Like I think we might have just spokesman. Like, yeah. Um, the um, yeah, because like a sub project lead would be like um, if I'm in CNI, you mm -hmm. know, they have like leads for each one of the drivers, um, which is a particular contributor role, mm -hmm. as opposed to, I mean, what I was saying before is I really feel like anything that involves interacting with the CNCF as a governance role, if you follow me. Oh yeah, okay. And needs to follow some kind of a governance process as opposed to, you know, a sort of strictly technical contributor role. Yeah, yeah. Now, for smaller projects, those end up being identical because you go to the governance and they say, okay, well, anybody at level approver or above is automatically part of the collective governance. Um, but, um, but it still so seems still seems like something that doesn't like handling CNCF relations feels like something that doesn't belong in the contributor ladder. Um, okay, so then maybe like we create that connection like in the scenarios where they're the same person um, in the description, right? That like, well, okay, wait. So then based on this, like. Are you saying that like the sub project lead would be the highest point in the ladder then, or is there? No, it shouldn't be actually, um, yeah. because we have we have a maintainer above it, um, which you know may or may not be the same thing as approver depending on how the project runs. Okay, so we just need um, to move the order where the yeah. Okay, okay. Well, sub project lead is going to be a little weird because it's going to be one of those ones where we add callouts and we say, hey, if you have sub projects in your project, this should probably be a contributor role. But if you don't, cut this section out. I have two questions. Um, how common is it outside of Kubernetes? Because Kubernetes is the unicorn um, to have sub projects. Um, well, you know, I just spent, I've spent the last two weeks, um, in fact, working on a governance template for projects composed of discrete sub projects. So uh, that was at the request of another project um, that is applying to the CNCF. So it's a thing. Um, and CNI and CSI, um, both have sort of discrete sub-project components. Network Plumbing Group does. So I wouldn't say it's the most common structure, um, but it's also one that recurs regularly. Okay. Is, wait, so sub-project leads aren't necessarily always maintainers though, is what you're saying? Um, what I'm saying is that depending on how sophisticated your sub-project setup is, you might ask each subproject to have a designated lead. And this would generally happen because the subprojects actually have more than three maintainers. Sure. I'm just wondering if we move it above, um, uh, if we move it under, I guess, 
approver, right? Assuming that's like, that's the yeah. direction. Um, Cause then, then we'll go to sub project. We'll go from sub project lead to maintainer. And then under maintainer, we have like the subcategories of like community maintainer, project maintainer, release manager and docs manager. Yeah, and I, and I think I think that's why sub project lead ended up where it is, ignoring the text for sub project lead. I think mm -hmm. the reason why it ended up where it is is we were thinking mm -hmm. about it as another special kind of maintainer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which it kind of is also, right? Because if you're a sub project lead, you are responsible for making sure that sub project delivers. But why wouldn't it go above it then? I, that would also work. Okay. <laughs> um, the, okay. um, so, um, I mean, Kubernetes is weird because it's one of those where effectively there are only sub project leads. There are no general maintainers of Kubernetes, if you follow me. In, in terms of a formally defined contributor ladder role. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there are people who actually do have owner status in KK root, but believe it or not, that's not formally defined. It should um, be. It should be. Um, yeah. The um, Somebody needs to write criteria for it. <laughs> they, criteria, um, be there at the beginning. Um, honestly, most of those people, no, these days, most of those people who are the owners are like release engineering people, people who functionally need that level of permissions in order to like say, produce releases rather than people who yeah. have this sort of path. Um, the, um, um, and that particular aspect of Kubernetes unicornishness, I don't necessarily see being repeated that much because like I'm working with Conveyor and they have sub distinct sub projects, but they also have an overall umbrella project. And there is a concept of being a general mm -hmm. maintainer as well um, because they also produce a packet stack as well as produce the individual tools. I have one more question. Um, yeah. You had said that, and, I, and maybe I misunderstood, it sounded like you said that um, any role that aligns with a position in governance should not be in the ladder. Am I saying that right? Or am I'm I misrepresenting? Saying, I'm saying specific governance permissions should not be in the ladder. What do you mean by governance? Um, so the... Um, To do so, we had we had a separate role called project lead, which is what was there for that sub project lead before. Mm -hmm. um, and that role called project lead. The only difference between project lead and maintainer was these extra deals with the CNCF, etc. Permissions. So that's not a contributor role; it's a governance role. If you follow me, there is no difference in contributorship between those two roles, just a difference in governance. So I understand that they're in different documents and they kind of line up in, you know, under contributor versus governance. But if I'm thinking as myself as a person and I want to gain additional responsibility and uh, influence over a project, it feels very natural to, to move from uh, a user to a contributor to an approver to a maintainer to going, I'd like to be a chair or something along that line. Um, and I would, I would have looked for that in the ladder with the idea that this is, these are all the various things you can attain and we've articulated how to attain it. So I think it helps to at least mention like there's these other things you can do as well. And this right. is what it yeah. looks like, even if we just link to where it is in governance. Yeah, and, and that might be the answer there is that you actually put it in there as a heading, like you put, yeah. you know, for example, chair and, you know, must be elected according to the procedure link. Yeah. I mean, what I would want to avoid doing in our templates is actually having text that potentially duplicates between different templates. Sure that are not alternatives to each other, because I know what's gonna happen is projects are gonna copy both templates mm -hmm. and not reconcile them. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'd be happy to help. I, I would have time tomorrow to, to maybe add some more comments and maybe put in 
something after some project lead that just links to even if they're just placeholders like governance roles and just a little blurb about what what it looks like to move into some type of governing responsibility in the project. Yeah. Okay, there we go. So say so how do we end up with some project lead twice? So I just fix that. Yeah. Um, that would be good. And like I said, the confusing thing about making this as a template is that we have this experience, right, where everybody's contributor ladder is going to have three to five rungs. Mm -hmm. But we, but what those three to five rungs are is going to be different for each project. And yeah. we have to provide examples of the seven or eight different rungs that they potentially could have. Agreed. Yeah. I think this is looking good. It's definitely evolving. I'm excited about how this is coming together. I'm sorry I haven't been able to contribute as much. Um, yeah, how are you feeling by the way? Oh, migraine, you said. I still have a headache. Oof. I, I know those are terrible. I just. Yeah. So, but uh, I'll, I'll be done with the day after this meeting. <laughs> yeah, oof. Um, so there's nothing else about the ladder. I mean, I know we all want to work on it, but is there anything else we wanted to discuss as a group or can I move on? Okay. The contribute website, I worked with Eeyore, Eeyore and um, I have two PRs all set up and ready to roll. One is to SIG contributor strategy. And then the other is to, I think I linked to the PR here. The other is in the existing repo CNCF contribute. Um, and this is kind of neat. You can see what the PR experience looks like. So the main website is in our repo at the moment. That's how it's defined. And then additional content comes from the CNCF contribute repository. And you'll still get Netlify previews. So if you click on it, you'll still see like what your change will look like in the full site. So if you had changed something, you know, under here, maybe added a new project or something, it would show up. And then when it's merged, it will trigger a Netlify build on the main site on our SIG contributor strategy site. So this is all ready to roll. I just need uh, reviews. Um, should be getting one on this one pretty soon. But if anyone has time to review this one, I'll link them in the, the notes. That'd be great because they kind of need to be merged at the same time. And then we should be able to make the site go live, which is terrifying. <laughs> I mean, exciting, sorry, not terrifying. Why, why would it be terrifying? And then we can just have a site and we don't need to talk about it anymore. It'll be great. Did anyone have any questions about that or? No, it's wonderful. Ship it. Cool. Yeah, I can't wait to see it live. It's been there forever. <laughs> I know. I was I was spending a lot of time trying to make sure that, for example, you could edit GitHub pages directly through GitHub, you know, like Markdown, and not have to have Hugo installed and you know, all sorts of stuff. I was trying to make it so that this would not degrade the experience of contributing content to the website. I want to make sure it was still as easy as just contributing to a markdown page in GitHub. So it took a little bit to get it where I wouldn't be apologizing. <laughs> Good having... things take time, right? Sorry? Good things take time. Nothing, yeah. you know, like it yeah. takes work. But I think we're there. So that'll be good. I, I mentioned it in the TOC call this morning. Oh, good. So the, um, uh, one thing that's going to become a source of, uh, I, one thing that we need to straighten out and I need to actually email the TOC about this is that we don't, um, currently we're down to one TOC liaison. 
and the way we set up approval for things going into the contributor site was that we have to have both of our liaisons take a look at them. So Can we need to actually- What is a TOC liaison? So there's two members of the TOC assigned to each SIG. Okay. Um, and the vital thing that R2 do for us is that um, they allow us to approve things to go on the contributor site without having to have the full TOC vote on them. Oh, okay. Which would be a huge delay if, if that was a requirement. Yes. Um, but since the TOC just changed membership annually, mm -hmm. uh, Matt Klein is no longer on the TOC, um, which means that we need to find a replacement for him. As far as Do we have to like shop concerned. around or could anyone? Yeah, pretty much. No, I have to, I have to post it to the TOC okay. and, and ask. Um, the, um, um, I'm willing to bet that Catherine would be interested, but I need to actually bug her about it. Different okay. Catherine. Yeah. Catherine with the K. I mean, I know you would be interested, but sadly you lack approval power. Is that holding us up at the moment? From at the moment, no. Okay. At the moment, no. <laughs> The um, um, uh, the I just actually well here's a question, do you know how much stuff Matt Klein signed off on, if anything? I've not. I didn't even know TOC liaison existed, so okay. I'm not a good person to ask. Okay. Um. Okay. Yeah. So. We'll see. Ping me before we do final publication. Of course. Yeah. Um, and just to make sure that we don't actually need approval that we didn't get yet. Okay. Yeah. The plan for the website is it will we'll merge them just so that I don't have to keep yeah. merging changes. Yep. But the site won't flip until, you know, someone important says we can change the DNS. So. Do you think that would be Matt or Matt's equivalent? Um, yeah. Okay. Well, wait, for DNS? Just to make the site live so that contribute.cncf.io, you know, actually goes to the new site. Is, would that need yeah. to be gated by two TOC approvals? Yeah, we need to tell. I mean, obviously it's the... Linux Foundation tech staff will actually do it, but we need to tell them that we have the TOC's approval. Okay. Um, so. Who is our um, other person who, who's currently on Saad, the TOC? Saad, Saad Ali. Okay. And, um, and he's still there. Okay. Um, well, maybe I'll show him the site now. <laughs> Cause I don't think he's seen it. Um, unless. Okay. They were on the original issue in the TOC issue list when I posted it. Um, just so we can get people looking at it sooner rather than right at the end when we want to flip TNS. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, I think when we select when we get the new TOC person, yeah. I think the fastest way to turn this around is actually going to be to set up a meeting with the two of them. And walk through it. And walk through it, yeah. Yeah, okay, makes sense. Um, so I will email out the TOC and try to get our second person so that we can get that moving as soon as possible. Thanks, that's really helpful. Okay. So the only other thing I had to talk about, unless someone else has something, is we wanted to do a talk at KubeCon and we wanted to make it specifically about one of our documents or advice, like an area of contributor growth. Um, and I thought we could chat about what we would like that to be, uh, what it should look like, what kind of content. 
I know both Paris and April one help with this and they're not here, but I still would love to have everyone's opinion. Um, and do we have a date for when we have to submit this? Assuming this is like the maintainer talks, um, yeah. I think the deadline is Sunday. Did you say Sunday? Yeah, I, I, that's the one, that's the deadline I saw for like, um, yeah. All right, well, with that kind of time frame, I'm going to get people's ideas and then just write a CFP and try to do this as quickly as possible. I did not understand that it was so soon. Let me double check. <laughs> Whoops. I'm happy to copy edit the proposal if you throw it in the uh, Slack when you're done with it. Thanks. Um, were there any particular topics that you think people would be most interested in? I think, I'm trying to see if we talked about this before and wrote it down. Maybe it's on the main one. The new contributor pipeline, I think, is what we were thinking about. How to encourage new contributors. Um, like, for example, the onboarding framework that Charles had suggested, which is wildly successful. <laughs> um, issue labeling, I think, is another area of that. And um, I think uh, just in general, how you interact with new contributors, which could cover, you know, chatting with them, encouraging them, doing an actual review. Um, do you know how long the talk is? Is it 25 minutes? Um, I'm checking. It is one 35 minute session. 35 minutes. Okay. Including Q&A. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. I Something think, like I that? Or 25? They're changing the platform this time though, right? So I assume it'll be similar to before, but. I mean, just based off of my terrible memories of how the last one went, yeah. I, I would hate to um, allocate too much time for Q&A. Sure. Especially since I think a lot of it may come after the talk is over via text. Wait, if anyone knows more about the platform. Okay, so. Um. Are you going to cover, um, I guess, like the resources slash templates that are available? So what can we point people to? We can point them to the, okay, uh, we have the contributors guide, yeah. the contributing guide, right? Yeah. Um, and, and specific to new contributors, do we have something else that we'd like to point people to? The project templates is really more for maintainers and less for what a new contributor would interact with other than the guide. Um, 
I don't think the ladder is far enough along to reference safely, unless we're talking about it more in a abstract way. But also like they wouldn't use it, right? <laughs> like they might, they would go look for one in a project. Yeah. This Wait, is sorry, who's the audience again? <laughs> <laughs> Um, this is why I like the new contributor tutorial because it's it's a hundred percent focused on successfully bringing people into the pipeline and, and making them basically successful contributors. It, it pretty much tees up that first PR. Yeah. I mean, we will either have a finished draft or an approved version of the contributor ladder by KubeCon. Okay, but then. You know, for a session focusing on contributor recruitment, the only real advice is have a contributor ladder. Like well, you don't need yeah. to go into detail about what it's in it. They just yeah. need to have one that shows potential new contributors that they can advance. Okay. Um, so I will try to write something up and then you get it for people to review probably, what day is it today? Today's Tuesday. <laughs> I'll try to have it by uh, the end of the day tomorrow so that we can all look at it and poke it <laughs> and knit it to death. How's that sound? Yeah, just as a reminder, in case you did, like, didn't realize that KubeCon's like in May. So like there's a good amount of time till then still. Does it need to, does it, it, does it get automatically accepted? Like, I don't think we get to change what the, the agenda says, right? It is whatever we submit or. I mean, it used to be a few yeah. bad ones, you know, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that's the usual thing is you can, you can make small changes. Okay. I think if we tried to completely change the contents of it, that might trigger um, some kind of a re-review. Okay. And and no, they don't automatically get accepted. Okay. Um, but that said, I would say the chances of acceptance of any particular session is like seventy percent. Yeah. I just want to make sure that what I would normally do for a talk that I was submitting just for myself, I, I want to make sure I put in the same amount of effort for this. Yeah. Well, among other things, even if acceptance is a lot easier, you yeah. still need the description to get people to show up at the session. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, I think this is enough to fill 30 minutes just fine. Um, does anyone see any gaps with what we'd want to cover? Uh, maybe advice just for a new contributor. I don't know. I think that's something that always comes up is how much advice should you give a new contributor that isn't specific to your project? Does that make sense? A lot of people are new either to open source to get mm -hmm to cloud native. <laughs> that was kind of my question earlier, like who's the audience for this? Cause like, I feel like when you're like talking about, like my initial take was that this was like people who have a project and they're trying to grow the, like the number of contributors they have, right? But then like, then like the thing you just said sounds like it would just be for someone who's a new contributor and not- well, Not actually, um, a lot of, contributing guides and type of support you give to new contributors involves the stuff I just said. And it's helpful to think about, one, is your project willing to do that? Two, do you duplicate that, duplicate that type of information in your documentation? Do you offer to help with that? Um, if not, do you send people elsewhere? What do you do when the people who are interested are in contributing to your project are going to need mentoring, essentially. Um, then can I suggest that we write, like this is for like, you know, I guess like maintainers and contributors both. So that like someone reading the abstract would be like, oh, like I don't necessarily have to be in this bucket for this to apply to me. I think the audience should be just maintainers. I was just saying that this is stuff that a maintainer will need to think about. Okay, okay. It's going, it, it has come up with every single project I've been on, whether you intended to mentor people new to open source or not, 
they're going to come to your project and how do you support them or not? We could talk about, we don't have to talk about that, but I do want the audience to be maintainers because I feel like that's, that's who our SIG is focused on. I'm typing on the wrong screen, cool, great. Oh, thanks for the form, Karen. I'm sorry, chat didn't show up for me. Oh, I guess that's the other thing. Um, is this, I'm gonna, I'll, have, I'll reach out to April in Paris and see if they want to co-present or if anyone else was interested in co-presenting um the talk josh in case you wanted to do no. more talks yeah um <laughs> i don't think i'm actually doing any other talks yeah yeah so so i can definitely be in for this okay Just i was let... i was kind of i want like a pool of people who would like to do this maybe and yeah. then we'll see who can make it happen Because um, to be honest, doing it all by myself would, would feel like a lot with yeah. everything that's going on right now. I, I, I don't want to sign up for that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sorry. I'm weak. <laughs> oh. Well. Yeah. Um, I managed to not type in the wrong screen again. Yeah. Good job, Karen. By the way, at this point, we don't know whether or not we're going to have to pre record or whether we're going to be allowed to do it live. Um, okay. The um, information about the new KubeCon platform is very scarce. Do we know what the platform is? Um, I've been given a name. It's not anything I'm familiar with. Oh. On top of which, I kind of get the impression that there's some major technical issue with the platform that they're waiting to see if that issue gets resolved before they commit to it. Is. So, um, so, so effectively, no, effectively, we don't actually know what it is. The, uh, <laughs> um, because I mean, I really feel like this session would be a better one to do live because if we could do it live, we could tailor it a little bit to who's there. Yeah. Um, yeah. but if not, we know what it takes to do it pre-recorded just this time we'll make sure they get the right recording this is yeah oh gosh was that unfortunate but i, I feel like this <laughs> talk in general would work well pre-recorded because i mean it helps if we know that no one's interested in a certain area but otherwise, I, I do feel we could just split our time amongst these topics and we pretty much know what we'd want to advise mm -hmm. so it's not quite as situational that's what I'm telling myself. <laughs> Anything to not repeat what happened at the last KubeCon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've never been so, uh, I don't know, deer in the headlights before. <laughs> during the talk. I, I mean, sadly, the, um, well, the problem is you didn't even have the option, right? Because I've been in the position where I literally have the entire tech staff of the conference on the podium that I'm yeah. supposed to be presenting on. Yeah. Um, and, you know, just, um, but under those circumstances, I literally walked down into the center of the aisle in the conference room and just mm -hmm. started doing a voice only presentation because at least you can still do that. And that's less um, stressful. I've done talks yeah. without slides or any tech or a working microphone yeah. and just gone, whatever, we're just gonna talk and it worked fine. But yeah. this, I felt like I was trying to talk at a, at a wall. <laughs> People couldn't even hear us. They couldn't hear yeah. you. It was, it was so many problems. And including, including our tech support was one of the people who couldn't hear us. Yeah, <laughs> that was an extra level of special. <laughs> the, um, so. It'll be better. It won't be like that. We're, we're battle hardened. <laughs> yeah, and it'll be somebody else's turn to have catastrophic melt meltdown. Exactly. Rotating karma. Okay. Well, 
that's all I have. Um, so if nobody has anything else, we can we can be done for the day. Well, I you know I'm in Chicago, so I'm done for the day after this. How is it out there? Are you guys in polar vortex territory, or you missed out on that? Oh, uh, we got a foot and a half of snow, um, which is fun. I have like great pictures of like things in my yard being swallowed up, and they're gone now. Um, but it's not too cold or anything. It's fine. It's Chicago. You know, <laughs> we're not Minneapolis, so yeah, it could be. Worse. We haven't gotten any real snow this year, which I'm fine with. What city are you in? Portland. Oh, I thought you got snow last week. It didn't stick. Oh, darn. No, no, no. It's it's good. I'm I am happy to see pictures of snow in other places. Oh, and not I, I like snow. Let's see. I live in I live in one of the sections of Portland that have what they euphemistically call unimproved roads. Oh, yeah. So yeah. driving those in the snow is not pleasant. Mm -hmm. Icy, snowy gravel is not fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. Well, I don't know. In Chicago, everyone knows how to deal with snow, so it's just it's just decorative. You know, it's not a problem. All right, I don't need to keep people and make you listen to my snow reminiscences. Yeah. We're good. Thanks everyone for coming. I appreciate it. Later.